So we are learning the Sicha from the first volume of the Kutei Sichos, for Vayakel, page 175 in the Hebrew translation, translation, which is what I have and what you have. The Sicha is about Shabbos, not surprisingly, because the first issue in Parshas Vayakel is that when Moshe gathers the people, he tells them to keep the Shabbos. The usual thing that's learned from this, yeah? Yeah, I'm listening. I'm just booking appointment for the post office. I promise you, I'm listening. <laughs> the the reason for this, say say the Chazal, is because the binyan, the building of the Mishkan, of the Tabernacle, is not docha the Shabbos. It's, it it does not override Shabbos. You can't do it on Shabbos. So even though all the work of the, as we'll see, all they are intrin, intrin, intrinsically linked the tabernacle on Shabbos, and you can't build this tabernacle on Shabbos. Okay, so, so the Rebbe is going to be talking about Shabbos, and, and really what he's going to be talking about is three different approaches to work, because the opposite of Shabbos is the weekdays, and the weekdays we work. So he says like this, At Moshe So Moshe gathered the congregation of the children of Israel, and he said to them, These are the things that Hashem commanded to do. Six days work shall be done, and on the seventh day you will have holy, a holy, Yerachem Kodesh will be holy for you, Shabbat Shabbaton, a day of rest. Okay. Why yes, and, say Shabbat Shabbat it's one of the Shabbat. questions. Yes, There are many questions. Some of them are asked by the commentaries on the Torah. Why does it say Moshe gathered? Let's skip because there's a, there's a lot of things here, a lot of questions that we're not going to get to because we don't have time. Okay, we'll go straight to chapter two. Bet. To understand questions that he asked in chapter 1 that we're not going to get into, we have to see what the sages said about the word teyase, shall be done. The way that it's written, teyase, is not taase. It's not you shall do work, but work shall be done. What's the difference between the two? When you're told to do, that means that you should put all your attention to your work, meaning your mind and your heart should be in it. Attention of the heart, that's how you say it in Hebrew. In English, you don't have to say pay attention with your heart. But in Hebrew, that's the way the idiom is. You pay full attention. Yeah, but you don't say with what organ you do that. And in Hebrew you say clearly, sim lev, meaning pay attention with your heart. And when you say, work shall be done, in the, it's not the... Uh, it's a command. No, no. No, in the opposite. Is, is like a command. It can be like a command. But we're not, neither of them here is a command. Neither of these forms is in the... Is in the um, what do you say, it, really? It's not called command form, it's a different name for it, whatever. What they mean is either you shall do or shall be done. So the shall be done is indirect. Okay? It shall be done. How shall it be done? By itself. It's done by itself as a war. From the Mechilta, you can see how far this goes. That he says, and it means that you don't do the work, it will be done by others. Shall be done means someone else will do it. So they used to say that it will be done by others means, in the Roman times, what that meant was you had slaves. A little bit later, Chazal said, we don't like the idea of slaves. We try to get it out of, out of the world. So they don't say slaves anymore. They say there will be non-Jews who will, for I guess for pay, do your labor for you. Today it seems pretty clear that it's the fifth industrial revolution, which will be machines making machines, in which we're almost there already. And that will change the way that people work. 
And I would say that the biggest challenge, the Nisayon, the biggest challenge that people are going to have in the next 50 years is what do you do in a world without work? Where most of the labor is gone. How, how do people function there? What is the psyche going to look like? How are people going to have meaning in life? So this is a very important subject. It's, what do you mean that things will be done by themselves? On the face of it, this mechilto is not, is not relevant. Because we have to work. We work quite hard, actually. But we don't usually do physical labor anymore. Physical labor is pretty much a thing of the past in most of the Western world. The people who do it, but they also, it's not physical in the sense that it used to be. Right? Even, even, you know, in America, when you, I was shocked when I was there, it was already 15 years ago, I didn't know it existed. But I saw they built houses, okay, they built houses out of wood. So you used to, used to drive nails into the wood. Nobody drives nails anymore. There's a thing that works on air pressure, and it shoots the nails. <laughs> No, nobody, you don't use your, you don't need physical force anymore, you don't need physical strength. Anyway, so in the Mechilta it takes it so far, just to, again, to give the example that shall be done means you don't even do it. It's done by someone else. But, really, that, that's not where he's going to go. He's, he's just bringing this as an example of how far you can take this. Really what it means is that it's a blessing from heaven. So it would be a blessing from heaven if you didn't do, have to do any work at all. But even though that's extreme, we don't, we're not talking about that. We want to talk about how it is in the person's psyche, in, in, in our psychology. So there is, a, there is a, a, a manifestation of this idea that work is done by itself, even in, regular, in the regular psychology of a person. So this is the famous thing that we all know, that from this we learn that when you are doing malacha, when you are doing labor, your, your heart and your mind should not be in it. Rather, it should be as if, as if it's being done by itself. As it says, The fruits of your labors when you eat, you're blessed, and it's good for you. Why does it say the fruits of your hands? Really, the literal thing is the fruits of your hands. That when you do labor, whatever kind of labor, it should be only external. We know this, this is a famous thing. Right? So, we could actually skip this if it wasn't for the for the Chiddush. So we, we can actually skip. And this is well known. This idea from the Rebbe is well known. This, this is the Iskafia. This is the Achna. Iskafia and Achna are very similar. Achna means submission. Iskafia means submission. It's pretty much the same. There's a Chiddush in Chassidus that's not usually um, articulated fully that iskafia makes vessels. That you have to have a dimension of iskafia in order to create vessels. You have to have a dimension of, of submission to your work in order to, to, to make, ensure that there are vessels created by Why am I saying this? Because today, can you write a book without your heart and mind in it? Let's say my job is to write. Could I possibly do what I do? if my heart and mind weren't in it. So I'm doing Torah. But let's say I wasn't doing Torah. I was editing some other magazine, whatever it was. Could I possibly do my work? Could you do your work as a, as a pharmacist without your heart and mind in it? Possibly? Could you ever really do what the Rebbe is saying here? Tell me. You couldn't. So what does that mean? What does it mean that only my hands should be involved and not my heart and my mind? First of all, he says, where should your heart and your mind be? They should be in Torah somehow. Meaning that you're doing this, he stresses here, you're doing it only because it's necessary. Right. We're going back to the, the avoid desire aspect of Why? work. Of work. Heart and mind in your work is going back to ah, the aspect okay, of yeah. So he's saying, I'm not dependent on this. That's okay, but he's not talking about it. He's saying, when you do the work itself, it's not when you go to work, you say, I know that Shem gives me the parnasa. It's not the work itself. It's not the hospital or wherever I work. That's not what gives me the parnasa. Shem gives me the parnasa. That's, that's, that's one thing. And that, that you have to have 
in mind in general, in a matif. But really, can you not put your... This, the work that we have today, if you're laying bricks, I can understand that uh, you don't have to pay too much attention to what you're doing. But, but most of the labor that people do today, they're a doctor, they're a lawyer, they, they cannot have their heart and mind, and they, they, won't, they won't be able to do it. So what does it mean? So that's why I'm introducing this idea that his coffee makes vessels. That what the Rebbe is saying, the way that it's relevant to us is that you have to approach your work in the sense of iskafia. You have to approach it as this is a necessary thing and I have to do it whether I like it or not. Meaning my heart and my mind not being in it means that it doesn't matter if, even if I love my work, even if my heart and mind are in it, I still have to do it as if it's just forced on me, coerced on me. Why is that? Because without that element, we know that you don't develop. Meaning vessels are not created. What do I mean by that? Even if you, if you, if you have the, the best job in the world, like I do, I have to write, I, have to, I, I use an app now, so it's really easy for me. I have this app that every half hour, um, it tells me I finished a chunk of, of 30 minutes. It's like a timer. And every half hour it goes up, actually, it's every 25 minutes. And then it tells me, do you want a five minute break or not? Sometimes I want it, sometimes I don't. But if, if I want it to take five minutes, it, it counts down to five minutes, and then I have 25 more minutes. And, it, and every day I have a quota that I want to reach, which is between 12 and 14 of these half hours. That's the minimum that, that I want to get to. Why do I do that? Because what I've found is that as much as I love what I do, um, I need consistency every day. I need to have a certain amount of hours every day to put into it. Otherwise, I, I, as much as I love it, I, I will spend um, time if I, if, I, if I, for instance, uh, suddenly I'm writing about a topic that really interests me, so I'll spend like hours <laughs> reading about it and I won't do my work. So you have to have this, this sense of, of... It's called inner discipline. You can't always have inner discipline, especially when your heart and your mind is in something. So the discipline comes, the habit comes, the habit formation comes from doing something by coercion. And that's a, it's a, that's a, a very important um, element, in fact, the most important element of any kind of job that you do. You have to have that, that, that uh, consistency of how many hours you put into it. Okay, so that's, that's why I'm taking this achna today. So that's really what it means. Okay? But now, so it, as, much as, as much as this is telling you, you should look at work as something, a necessary evil almost. Okay? The second part of the sikha goes in a completely different direction. Why? Because the second part of the sikha is, according to my theory, it's havadarana. It's about separation. So in chapter 9, it comes to the second part. Okay, so basically everything, everything in, in, up to chapter 9 is a development of this idea, of various aspects of this idea of not having your heart and your mind in it. Chapter 9, he says, completely different. Uh, this is the complexity of how you have to treat work. That there is an element of work that I'm only doing it with my external being. I'm not doing it with any of my inner sense of experience and, and love and, and passion. Chapter 9, Mina Pasuk El Advarim, from the verse El Advarim, these are the things. Lomedet Agmarat, Isur Lametet Amalachot Beshabbat. We saw this actually. El Advarim. So they say El equals 39. How does El equals 39? El equals 36. So we saw in, in, in uh, Parshas Bo, if you remember, here in the same volume, it's interesting that they didn't even put a, a note here to go there. In general, the citations here in, uh, in volume one are horrendous. There he explains that when you change the hay of Eile into a chet, then it's equal to 39. Why would it be changed into a chet? First of all, because hay and chet are both guttural consonants or letters. They come alef, hay, chet, ayin. They're all from the, from the deep part of the throat. And there he explained that there's something matzah and chametz, if you remember. He said that if you're able, the Mishkan is, is what transforms chametz into matzah. Yeah. The Mishkan is what makes 
um, even things that are um, seemingly mundane and the lower reality, they transform it into something higher. So he said, there a hay and chet can be transformed one into the other. So then you get 39. But in any case, from here they learned the 39 categories of work that are forbidden on Shabbos. Whatever kind of labor was needed to build or operate the Mishkan, the tabernacle, is considered a category of labor that is forbidden on Shabbos. So we see that there's a connection between them. If you learn one from the other, there must be a connection. But now he says something deeper. He says, It's not because they both have 39. There's a much deeper reason for this connection, that whatever category of labor was used in the Mishkan is category of labor that's forbidden on Shabbos. Because really they are one thing. Really the Mishkan, the 39 categories of labor in the Mishkan, the 39 categories of Shabbos are, are one thing really. Or, deeper, the Mishkan and Shabbos, sorry, and the, and the work that we do that's forbidden on Shabbos, uh, leave the Shabbos alone for a second, the categories of labor that went into the Mishkan are the 39 categories of labor in the world. It's not by mistake. They are the same thing. It's not accidental. Mistakes are wrong. There's a double connection here. They're really all the 39 categories of labor. Where did they come from? They came from the tabernacle, not the other way around. The source is the Mishkan, the source is the tabernacle, the higher form of work. And from that came down in a process of evolution, of, of lessening the categories of labor that people have in the world. The second one is, So the, the purpose is also the same. What was the purpose of the categories of labor in the tabernacle? The service of the tabernacle was to transform a place in the world, the tabernacle, into a dwelling place for God. What then is the purpose and goal of all the categories of labor that we do in the world? Same thing. It's also to make the world into a dwelling place for God. This is a completely different approach to labor. The Mishkan was replaced by the base meter, so it doesn't change the whole no, idea. No, of course not. It's still, it's still used the same categories. It's still the same categories were used to make the, 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 the Mikdash. So there were new categories that weren't needed uh, in, the ta- in the tabernacle, but were needed to make the Mishkan. They did not become new categories of labor that, that were forbidden in Shabbos. It starts from the tabernacle. That's the only... Uh, so there are works that you don't do when you build a right. mikdash. Maybe. They're permissible on Shabbos. Some things that are uved in the chul, the chul, meaning that the sages say, but this is like, for instance, a lot of no, people I say brushing your teeth. There's no brushing your teeth in the tabernacle and anything close to it even. So, so they say it's an uved in the chul. It's something that you do on a weekday, you don't do it on Shabbos. But that's just the rabbi. No, there were things that you didn't do in the base of mikdash, which you did do in the mishkan. They dropped out. What? Oh, dying all the no, skins to put over as the roof. No, they died, of course they died. They died for the garments, they died for other reasons as well. It wasn't the only reason. The wool garment. Everything you need to do for the for the coverings you needed to do for the garments of the, of the priests. In any case. In any case. So this is a completely different approach to work. And this is called that in all your ways you should know him. Meaning that all the labor that again the first first the kafia was, the achna was you should approach work as something that's menial. Don't put your heart and your mind into it. But now he's telling you, all the labor that you do in, the, in, in life, you should see it as an instrument for creating a dwelling place for God. That's called in all your ways you should know him. It's a, it's a puzzle. You know? And Mishnah. It's not, it's, it's a serious thing. 
So you can't not put, should, should you not put your heart and your mind into yeah, but you've elevated, place for life? you've elevated the work. So it's a, it's right. a, so it's a different story. So then you can't put your heart ah, and mind into it. It's not so simple. It means that there are layers here. There's a layer in which, and that's what I said in the beginning, that the way that we apply what the Rebbe said in the, in the first part today, in my opinion, is mostly that you have to have discipline. And in the discipline, you should not involve your mind and your heart. Discipline should be something automatic. It should be almost like a machine. I do this and this amount every day, or I strive to do this and this amount every day, and I don't think about it. I don't, I don't, I don't go back to, the, to, to, to designing my day differently uh, because uh, I feel different. Uh, even even the, the Rebbe, by the way, did this. Every day, he, he, he got up and he did what he needed to do. And he didn't take vacations when he was sick. That's one of the things. He worked through colds. He worked through everything. And in fact, that he didn't leave 770 when he, when he had the heart attack. So I don't know how much work he did. But he did. Why did he stay there? Because he said he knew that he wouldn't be able to come back and forth if he went home. That's one of the reasons. For certain. I don't know how he felt. I don't know how much work he was able to do. But he was there, committed to doing what he needed to do. And that, that part is the iskafa, that's the achna. But on top of that, you have to understand that the purpose of your work, even if it's menial labor, there's a lot of menial labor went into building the tabernacle, is to create a dwell, dwelling place for God here in this world. That's a completely different approach. Of course you're going to put your heart and your mind into it. You have to feel that, that Allah so it changes the, the, the purpose. You said before, I don't want it to be like a Vodazara. I don't want it to be that I'm working in order to get Parnasa. I said, oh, so why am I working? What is the meaning behind it? So here I have, I have the commitment. That's the first layer, I think, from the first part of the Sifa. The second part is, what is the meaning of what I'm doing? The meaning of what I'm doing is creating a dwelling place for God here in this world. Again, they're like, they're like a cake. They're like a layered cake. So you have one layer that says this, the next layer says that. And even in the Gemara, it says many times that when it's a day of work, we do everything we can to shorten the amount of time of davening. We don't say extra things. You never, you never, why? Because if it's a day of work, the Kodesh, the holiness of davening, everything that has to do with that, is minimized. Because there's an ideal in the world. That doesn't work with the first uh, explanation. It only works with this explanation. But there's, you're creating a dwelling place. The fact that you worked for so many years in pharmacy, you created a dwelling place for Hashem. That's what you did. All the more so that the sages say that six days you shall work is a mitzvah. Okay? At least uh, the, that's what the sages say. Okay? Where do they say this? And the Mechutah, the same Mechutah we quoted before, also says that this is a mitzvah sasa, to do work. How can this be? Because, again, we said before that it, you shouldn't have your heart and mind into it. So, because the purpose of all labor is to create a dwelling place below for Hashem. That's the, that's the way a Jew should look at his work. I'm creating a dwelling place for Hashem. Then that's a mitzvah. And you should be always working. <laughs> a very Russian attitude. <laughs> because only all the, the difference, the entire difference between the tabernacle and the rest of the world is that the tabernacle is an actualized dwelling place for God. It's, it's already that. And the rest of the world is in potential. The entire world will become a dwelling place for God eventually. So every moment you should take, a, 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 every moment that the opportunity presents itself, you should be working and transforming, using your labor, the world from a potential dwelling place for God to an actual dwelling place for God. And that's the, 
that, that means that you are performing the obligation to know him in all your ways. Perhaps that's why the rebel was so against people going into pension, because they're not worth worse. It's a mitzvah. What would be the third level? So we don't have time to get into it here. What would be the third level? The third level is that is is a, is is actually taking the first level and connecting it with the second. How could that be? So there's something called that you, you go into a zone. Into a zone. Into a zone. That's what they call it today. That you're working, but it feels like you're not working. It feels like it's flowing by itself. It's not. It's kafia. It's not. You're not, it comes from, that's what I meant, that this coffee makes vessels. That the more that you are committed to something, and you do it every single day, you can, you can find a way to enter the zone in your work. And the zone means that it flows by itself. You're not, it's almost like you're not doing anything. That's the joy of work. It's a whole different level. That's, that's the hamtaka, that's the sweetening. That's the third level. So you see that people... They, they start working, and then they come out at the end of the day, and they, and they don't know that you know eight hours have passed, and I didn't even feel that eight hours passed. What was going on? Who did what? It really is a feeling that it happened by itself. And what is that? That is feeling. That's called feeling that the divine is flowing through me. That I'm only the best. That's what happened when I went to work in the farms. So that's what you have. You know, I used to it's called that Hashem is my chayim. Hashem is my life force. Okay. Let's go for our morning coffee break.